Hello everyone, in this episode we'll take a deep dive into the Dune trailer and the behind the scenes footage to look at things you may have missed. If you are new to the channel please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and click the bell so that you can be first to be notified of new videos. Now that that is out of the way, let us deep dive into the Dune footage. This video will contain spoilers of the Dune story. This is the tombstone of Duke Leto's father and this is the bull that killed his father depicted on the tombstone. Here we get to see the bullhead that killed Duke Leto's father. Now you must learn to rule others. Something none of your ancestors learned. The Reverend Mother speaks of the Atreides ancestors not learning to rule. Here she's probably referring to the Harkonnen because the Reverend Mother is well aware of the bloodlines. This appears to be a Bene Gesserit ship and the arrival of the Reverend Mother on Caladan. In this scene, Paul is being led by Jessica to the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohaim to be tested with the Gom Bar. And this is when Paul is locked in with the Reverend Mother, where a helpless Jessica waits behind the door. The Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohaim looks like Queen Nefertiti with her hat design. Here she is very reminiscent of the Egyptian Queen Nefertiti. Paul wears at his collar the Atreides hawks flying down from a side point of view. The Atreides hawk is visible on Paul's sword in the shield practice scene. And the Atreides hawk is visible in many, many aspects of this film. It's visible on the flags, on the clothing, on the weaponry, literally everywhere. It's definitely a prominent symbol of this film. In the desert shot there is a plume of smoke in the distance which could be a nod to the quote, a column of smoke by day, a pillar of fire by night. Or it could be the scene of Liet Kynes, left in the desert to die. And this may be a reverse shot of the spice blow scene. Here we see an exotic looking Jessica, who could be clothed in this fashion for several reasons, upon her arrival to Arrakis. She perhaps looks this way to fit in with the locals, or to flirt with the local legends of a Mehdi's mother, keeping the legend alive. Or it could be that she appears to be a concubine because Duke Leto wasn't supposed to take a wife, leaving open the opportunity for the unification of houses through marriage, perhaps a sign to the other houses of the Landsrad. The Europeans even wore their own veils for their own customs and reasons. One of those reasons was that no one was allowed to look upon the queen. The same could be applied here to the duke's concubine. Her handmaidens at either side hold up her dress, so she clearly appears to look like an important figure. And even on Arrakis, she appears to wear the jewellery that she was wearing upon her arrival. Thufa is carrying a Japanese parasol, and you can clearly see the sulfur juice stains of a mentat. This is stunt coordinator Roger Yuen, and he'll appear in several scenes. He appears to be a guard for the Atreides. We also get several views of the Ornithopters. The side views. Here is a front view of the Ornithopter. And these are the Ornithopters in flight. And they appear to have longer wings than we once thought. They look longer than previously imagined from the set photos. We get a better look at the Sandwan bas relief, depicted in the Arakeen Hall. You really get a sense of the length and the scale of this bas relief. The headboard depicting koi fish is directly from the book. Paul's attention went to the carved headboard of his bed. A false headboard attached to the wall and concealing the controls for this room's functions. A leaping fish had been shaped on the wood with thick brown waves beneath it. He knew if he pushed the fish's one visible eye that would turn on the room's suspenser lamps. This scene could be after the Hunter Seeker. This is not the Baron, as some previously thought. As I mentioned earlier, this is Selesa Secundus, and these are Sardaukar. Here you can see the Harkonnen with the Sardaukar. These seem to be the Harkonnen troops clashing with the Atreides. The Baron bathing in an oil slick liquid could hold medicinal qualities to keep the Baron's skin ailments at bay. Here we can see Dr. Yui wearing Duke Leto's signet ring and behind him are the Harkonnen. Here is a closer look at the signet ring worn by Duke Leto. This is an important object for the movie and will appear throughout several scenes. Here you can see Raban with an ink vine whip. This is the kind of whip where Gurney Halleck got his ink vine scar on his left cheek. 
In this shot, Paul is holding a different blade, a curved blade, something we haven't seen before, with a kind of handguard, which could be an Atreides Kinjal dagger. Here we can see an example of walking without rhythm, based on the pattern of the footprints in the sand. And here we can see a face-off with Duncan Idaho and the Harkonnen. Gurney here appears to be saying, what has Mu to do with it? A line straight from the book. The planet Arrakis, Chani and Paul. Here you can hear the cast pronounce it as Arrakis and Chani. So this seems to be the pronunciation that will be in the film. Frank Herbert pronounced it as Arrakis and Chani. The sandworm sounds like a giant elephant or whale. And the track that we hear in the trailer is the song Eclipse from the Dark Side of the Moon album by Pink Floyd. One of the album covers looks like the solar flare in the Dune logo. And the track in the trailer was specifically composed by Hans Zimmer himself, with the help of Juan Garcia Herreros, or Snow Owl, recording bass lines for the track. The lyrics in Eclipse are relevant to the Dune story. The dark side of the moon is where Muad'Dib, the mouse, is visible. And apparently this isn't the first time that Denis Villeneuve has used a popular track that is relevant to his film's meaning. And here is a cheeky cap on the set of Dune. So what did you all think of the Dune trailer and the behind the scenes? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and click the bell so that you can be first to be notified of new videos. If you like this content and wish to see more, you can become a member where you'll receive exclusive access to more content. If you like this channel, you can support me on Patreon where you'll also receive exclusive access. Thank you to my subscribers, members and Patreons. And until next time, see you soon.